All right, gas burners for for gas. <clears throat> so what is a gas burner? A gas burner is a device that mixes primary air and fuel gas from a manifold to burn a flame aimed into your furnace's heat exchanger. A gas combustion occurs at the gas burner. Gas burners have a very simple design. There's really not much that goes on right at the actual burner, except it is the place where we are actually igniting the gas. A gas is carried to the burner assembly through a pipe with multiple openings, which are call, uh, called the gas manifold. Okay, that gas manifold has small sockets in which your spuds are actually installed. The spuds are burner attachments with specifically sized orifices that direct a specific amount of gas into each of your gas burners. Okay, so the spuds are typically threaded into the gas manifold. So gas is mixed with certain amount of primary air is fed through the orifice in the spud, which then passes to the burner where combustion is now going to take place. And the burner gas mixes with the secondary air. So here we are. This is what we're talking about. We have our manifold, which is right here this black piece, this is our manifold. Okay, so gas travels through our manifold and here is our spuds. Our spuds and our orifices are right here. This is where the orifices get shot into or threaded into. And then here is your actual burners. Okay, so how does this work is as gas follows through the manifold, it gets shot out through the spuds and through the orifice into the actual burner. <clears throat> and here's your other view of your, your spud assembly, okay? So gas actually exits right through these little holes right here at a specific rate. That rate is stamped on the actual orifices themselves. And if you look really closely on this particular uh, orifice, you can see that it's actually stamped with like a 65. Okay, so using a gas orifice sizing chart, you would be able to figure out how many BTUs each one of these burners would be putting out at, you know, we'll say three and a half inches of water column. So, you know, if you would like, you know, break out a, a gas orifice sizing chart and, and see how much your, these orifices would actually be putting out. These orifices would be sitting at the end of our actual burner tubes. So beware, though, that the rate of gas flow through the orifice in the spud depends on the actual gas pressure and the specific gravity of the gas. Remember that from a previous lesson that we just covered. A equal pressure, less LP gas will flow through an orifice than natural gas because LP gas is heavier. Remember, we got to know the specific gravity. We got to understand the different characteristics between natural gas, LP, butane, ethane, and all those other things that we are using for combustion and for heating. When converting a natural gas furnace to LP gas furnace, remove and replace the spuds with a different orifice size for the different flow necessary for LP. So gas burners are used uh, in different types of applications. We have forced air furnaces, we have uniheaters, we have boilers mainly. Gas burners are what ensures the proper mix of primary air and gas. 
so that so it can be readily ignited and burned. And we have two types of burners that we normally will run into in, in this field. We have atmospheric and your power burner. Your atmospheric burners are uses like a siphoning action, almost like a sucking action of the gas flow through the orifice to induce airflow through the burner without the need of a blower. Okay, you will find a lot of these types of atmospheric burners on a lot of your older style furnaces. These burners are usually constructed of steel and may be a different length and size. Okay, depending on the BTUs of what the furnace is going to put out, you may have only two burners, you may have ten burners but they are all based off of what the heating value of that furnace is. Your gas burners in older furnaces have primary air shutters that can be adjusted to regulate the amount of primary air that is added to the mixture. However, a lot of our newer furnaces that are more using uh, inducer motors and power burners, we no longer have adjustable air shutters. So here's a, fern, a burner right here that has an adjustable air shutter on the end of it. The adjustable air shutter is located right here in this, this opening. We were able to take a screw and we can actually open and close the opening of the uh, primary air to regulate how much our air and fuel mixture actually occurs. So when the gas, um, gas valve opens, as we start to introduce gas into the center of our burner, we now start that siphoning action, like a, a sucking action, where we begin to suck air into the burner as well, where we have the air to fuel mixture, so that we can now support combustion. We have also what is called a crossover tube. This crossover tube is what actually carries the gas from burner to burner all the way down. One tech tip that I can give you when it comes to dealing with your burners is you need to make sure that the crossover tubes are in perfect alignment with each other and they are not dirty and that they do not have something in there that's blocking the flow of gas to carry from one burner to the other. The body of atmospheric burners have like almost like an hourglass type shape to them. The narrower in the center and wider at the two ends. The narrower section of the burner produces a venturi effect, which is the reduction in pressure that occurs when a fluid flows through a constricted section of the pipe. So as the gas enters an atmospheric burner, it must speed up as it passes through that narrower area. And when it happens, it creates a low pressure, which draws in that air for the primary shutters. So like I said, it creates like a suction effect, simply due to that different pressure change. And the primary air mixes with the fuel gas as they pass through the narrower constricted center of that gas burner. And that Venturi effect produces, produced by the narrower passage also causes the fuel and air gas mixture to kind of swirl and mix. We have three different types of atmospheric burners that are out there. You have your ribbon, your slotted, and your single port type burners. Your ribbon burners feed the fuel gas and primary air mixture along the length of the burner, produce uh, a solid flame on the top. Then you have your slotted burners, which feed a mix of fuel gas and primary air through a series of narrow slots, such as this. Okay, so that's your slotted type burner. Then you have your single port burner. And they can be manufactured in a variety of patterns to meet specific design needs. The most efficient single port burner is called the in-shot burner. 
Okay, in shop burners direct the mix of air and fuel gas through a large orifice to produce a large flame that is directed into the heat exchanger. These are your most common type burners that are out there today. Due to efficiency in the design of heat exchangers, most new furnaces are going to have the in-shop burner. And that's what the in-shop burner looks like. Your orifice would be sitting right in this little circle right here, which will now introduce gas right down the center of our burner and out the other side as well as sucking in your your primary air to have that air to fuel mixture which was now carried all the way down to the end of the burner where your ignition actually occurs where the flame will actually come out yeah and here is an actual um, end shot look of what a burner would actually look over. So here is your crossover tubes that I mentioned before. For each one of our burners, these crossover tubes needs to be clean and in alignment with each other. If they are not, you're going to have an issue with with ignition. I've seen it in the field where maybe two, maybe four of these burners will actually light perfectly fine and then the last two would not light and that's just simply due to the fact is that the gas could not carry over to the next burner. So this is an actual uh, really good picture to see uh, how the sequence of operation of the burner actually uh, happens. Over here we have our hot surface igniter, which is actually what lights the gas. So we have a rollout switch here and we have a flame sensor. So how this actually works is the hot surface igniter has to glow red, hot enough to ignite the gas that happens to come out of our burner. So once the the gas valve actually opens, we actually are igniting these burners in a sequence right down the line. The hot surface igniter is going to ignite the gas that's coming out of this burner first because it's actually closest to it. Once that burner ignites, that flame will now carry over to ignite this guy and then it carries over to ignite this guy, this guy, this guy and then this guy. So once this end burner actually ignites the flame sensor will now sense that flame which will then send that signal back to the ignition module saying that the burner actually did light. So there's a lot of mechanical portions on this burner that you can see in the event that something was to go wrong where we couldn't ignite. Okay, the rollout switch would actually sense whether or not the flame is rolling back out or maybe hitting this piece of metal, hitting the metal cabinet, something like that. So it's a safety to ensure that the furnace did have a safe light off and all of the burners in the system are indeed lit. Your power burners, on the other hand, is a type of burner that uses a blower to force both your primary and secondary air into the burner tubes. The burner tubes have, was, uh, has angular deflector plates to spin the flame for more efficient burning. A spark igniter or a hot surface igniter is used to ignite the gas. Your power burners are not common in a lot of your residential furnaces. They are definitely going to be found in heavy commercial and industrial applications. Okay, the use of fuel oil requires a power burner. And these burners are able to achieve higher burning efficiency due to their ability to better control the ratio of air and fuel. Power burners can also be what we call dual fuel as well, which means they have the ability to switch between gas and oil. 
Okay, and this is a example of a power burner. Okay, we have our gas valve, we have an air pressure switch, our primary air shutter, our blower motor, and our ignition module. Okay, so how this type of furnace actually works, we were able to, uh, this type of furnace would be able to connect to probably both oil and, and gas. So you have your, your gas valve right here. You have your air pressure switch. Okay, so the air pressure switch needs to prove first before the gas valve would actually open. This is a safety. We have to prove that the blower and the fan inside here is actually spinning before our ignition module sends the signal to the gas valve to actually open so that we can ignite the gas. Instead of using a hot surface igniter, we are actually using an ignition transformer, which is connected to a bunch of electrodes in here, which would actually ignite the gas. Okay, so we are actually able to adjust manually that air to fuel mixture by opening and closing this air shutter that you see here, and you'll see the actual uh, openings right here. By opening those, you're introducing more air. By closing them, you're actually restricting the air. So these are where you would actually commonly see on a lot of your big commercial uh, furnaces and boilers.